Good morning. I was sitting here trying to fix my phone. I had to put something behind it. Keep falling down in my medicine case. Uh, today I've got a bunch to do. Today's Friday. I'll go out there and sort what I, the rest of it that I need inside the ambulance. Uh, mainly my clothes and sort out what I don't need. Blugga, blugga, blugga. I'm looking at this crazy dog right now. He has knocked down one of his dog beds in the floor. He has turned it upside down and crawled under it. That's the big boy that did that. I believe it is. I don't think it's a little... Oh, uh, oi. I don't want to disturb him because the law want me to do something. I got the hiccups this morning. Like I every damn morning, I ain't take my medicine and get the damn hiccups. My son said, are you going to go? Are we going to go? Are we going to go? He's going to go out with me to, to Ehrenberg and Courtside and Perkins or whatever the hell the name of that town. And then he's going to stay a couple of days and then he's heading north up there to check on the property. He said he wants to go all the way up to the, the, mount, the one in the mountain because that's basically the one I gave him. He wants the one on top of the mountain. I said, well, it's probably snowing about three foot, four foot deep up there. I heard last night it was like 11 or 12 degrees last night up there, so I said, good luck. I said, well, you want to go up there with me? I said, no, I'm, I'm going to the desert because I'm cold already. I don't want to go up there with 11 or 12 degrees. Me and the puppies ain't going to like that. We're trying to go where it's 70 degrees, 70 and 80 degrees during the day. You know, because his arthritis is bad as mine. Uh, I find me a place out there. I'm liable to stay there. What if there's a place to rent around there? Hmm. I want something with a some kind of desert cabin or something. I wouldn't want to be inside town. That's the problem with find, trying to find, you can find places all over in, inside town to rent, you know, one or two bedroom, three bedroom, whatever. But you try to find something out a little ways, you can't hardly find nothing. Unless they want you, let's see, 100 acres or something to rent. You know, damn 100 acres. Um... I just ain't been that energetic. I don't know what the hell the wrong... It's cold. <laughs> That's probably why. Um, I did still do that. I know what coats I'm going to take. I'm going to take two of them I ain't never wore. Because they still got the tickets on them. I'd be like Minnie Pearl. Anybody remember Minnie Pearl? She'd wear a hat with a ticket on it. That was her signature. Howdy! I think that was the name of, of what she used. Her hat with a ticket on it, and her old apron dress. Women don't wear aprons no more like they used to. They used to so make beautiful little aprons and bonnets for their hair so they wouldn't get fire or something in it. I remember the good old days when women show their ankles, and now they show their crotch. I hate to tell them the way to keep a person interest is uh, what, what they call that? The intrigue or the, or uh, oh, uh, sometimes showing less is more. I put it that way. I ain't no shit. That imagination. They don't lead a damn thing to the imagination. Sometimes that's all you got, your imagination. I'm playing with one of the cords. I put one of them inside my medicine box, and this is the one. Because I usually lose them. I've got two or three more brand new ones in boxes. I bought a bunch of them at Walmart. It's $3 a box for these uh, headset with a, uh, that you can talk on a phone. And I bought, well, I bought the last of three or four or five or whatever the hell they had left and I just throw them in there it's three dollars a box and I just throw them all in there 
That's what my son says. You you run across the deal, you don't buy one, you buy six or seven or eight. Well, that's a hell of a wear out. Everything wears out, even me. My dog's covered up my poor little baby puppy. He, he gets it, he sleeps with me and he gets up and I get up. And he runs in there and gets in bed with his mama. Oh, it was big boy underneath that uh, dog bed. I see Ori's up scratching. Quit, Ori. He has a nervous itch. I've got spray for him. I need to probably take if I'm going to the desert. Crawling one of the Joshua trees. I'm going to throw their bones in. Or buy them new ones. I might just buy them brand new ones. They'll carry them things around for two or three days. Chewing on them, trying to get the marrow out of the center. Uh, yep, I got a bunch of odds and ends to do. Gotta get into the bus and get them, uh, oh, what they call them, uh, tents. Go, uh, awning tent. I'm gonna take one of them. Should take two, but I'm just gonna take one. And, uh, throw a tarp over the top of it and bungee them down. That's what I'm going to do. I'm sure we're going to take enough propane. I'm taking two five-gallon containers on them rhino containers. I guess they're five gallons. Take it, or maybe they're ten gallons. So I'm taking 20 gallons of propane. Then the dogs will burn the buddy heater in the Coleman stove. I always set the buddy heater outside underneath that tent with them. So we can all be covered up. That's what. Of course, if, if that tent's going to be probably open on one side, closed in on three. Maybe open on two sides, whatever. But I'll, they like to lay in front of it on the car. They get cold too. I heard in the mornings it's going to be in the 30s. So that ain't going to be good for my arthritis. But it'll be dry, it won't be damp. <laughs> That's what one good thing. I'm getting older and I for sure feel it. Yeah. I gotta tell my daughter she's gonna throw a fit. You're leaving again? You won't never stay home. And you know if we're in the middle of a COVID. Whatever. Quite a case. The other one, hell, she she's way up in Colorado mountains where the damn snow is at right now. Or he quit it. Thank you. He minds for about ten seconds, like a two-year-old kid. He gonna get back under his cover. <laughs> Crazy little dogs. You gotta watch your dogs after the cows to eat them, especially the little ones. But I don't go nowhere without, and I stay right with them, and they're always in their little pen unless I got them on a leash. In fact, I, when I get back, I'm gonna expand that tent. That step, I'll spend another 130, 130, another $137 so I can go all the way around that tent with the, with the frame cage. Yeah, I got it four foot tall, guaranteed, well it's, yeah, four foot tall, yeah, little guy jump out at two foot, he'd sail right over it, at three foot he, he'd go climb, hit the top, and then push himself over, at four foot he says, not a little too high, it's like a four foot chain link fence, um, anyway, damn your plugs. I got a whole box of these little spongy, spongy things on the bottom. Take them off every once in a while and clean the, the little step in them. Got a earwax. Brush them with a toothbrush down in there, cleans them up. Give you a tip for this morning, use a toothbrush. Uh, I don't know where I'll take my false teeth or not. Probably will. 
case I decide to go somewhere fancy. I like to put, I don't know where I'll take a suit and tie, but I might take a nice polo shirt or something. Wearing a shirt with a collar is less threatening than wearing a shirt without a collar. There's your another tip. So if you want to be uh, taken seriously, this, that, and the other, wear a shirt with a collar. I don't care if it's a blue shirt or whatever shirt. It could be a polo shirt. Yeah. It's like if you're going to go get a car loan, don't wear a no damn muscle shirt. Are you... Or if you want somebody to take you seriously, uh, dress up a little bit. Don't wear a cut off Levi's with your ass hanging out. And a damn t shirt. Women know that quite well. They have to dress up. And if you want to be six, sexy, you dress like Daisy Duke. You want to be taken seriously, you, uh, what the hell, <laughs> you dress like uh, the Queen of England. Now, I was going to say Thatcher, but that's beside the point. Yeah. You look stout and proper. Oh, God, I'm telling you, it's the day, it's the day. It's sun, daylight's getting, finally getting daylight. It's almost, a little ten after seven, it's just not turning daylight, that's, Another thing, I like the early morning. Then I get depressed and go to bed and try to sleep too much. What did I sleep last night? Let me see what I slept. We got 487 steps in. I slept 4 hours and 17 minutes, is all I slept. So that wasn't good on me. I set up, I've been binge watching the damn Netflix and then I got on the idea of watching everybody's uh, YouTube channel. Hell, some of them damn goes back three or four years. Put on their, uh, oh, what they call it. Oh, uh, anyway, watch all their damn old, move, old videos. Find out about them. Some people I've watched on here for five years. They need the watch time, so I uh, help them out. And I watch it. Some people may turn on their uh, whatever the hell it is. Their what? Uh, uh, their what? Are they? I can't remember it. See, my damn mind's going. But anyway, they, they'll sit there and go to sleep and, and watch all their old videos. What? Well, that ain't watch them. That's letting your damn computer run. I like to sit and watch them. Starting from right now and going backwards. You find out a lot about them, this, that, and the other, and all kinds of shit. Yep. I gotta get my medicine box ready. I got a whole box of medicine that I need to sort through. Bubonic plague shit. I get out there and get trapped. Me and the dogs left. I'm taking 10 pounds of dog food, too. Or 20 pound sack, one of them is 20 pound, 20 to 25 pound, maybe it's a 25 pound sack, yeah, 25 pound sack. They'll have to skin by if they have to eat dog food, and I'm taking all their treats. We get stuck in the desert for a month, we'll have plenty of food. I always take at least four to six weeks worth of food, me and the dogs. So, hell, I ain't worried about shit. I don't Water, we'll have to figure out something, but I can show you how to catch water. That's something I need to sh show you people. You can take water and catch water right out of, uh, out, of, out of thin air. I don't give a damn if you're in the middle of the desert. You can t there's a moisture content uh, in a any atmosphere. Unless you're in the zero atmosphere, and that shit's got moisture content, too. Yeah, so everybody said, you know, you watch these Star Wars movies, you hear, there's no explosion in space. You can't hear it going boom, you know what I'm saying. There's no sound. Yeah, there you go. The deep darkness of space muffles it out. 
least that's what I've been told. That's one place I ain't been up in a space. Yeah. I bet that prime, the, uh, the space station, some prime real estate. Elon Musk is wanting to build a base on the moon to go to Mars. Good luck. I didn't find nothing. I didn't lose nothing up there on that damn rock. You know, there's three heavens. I wonder which one. God says he's in the third one. God presides in the third heaven. There you go. If you get to study of what heaven is, it's a state of mind. Yeah. Because uh, uh, there was a guy that was uh, that brought him before Jesus. It says he's possessed and won't cast a demon out of him. And God said, no, he wasn't possessed. Jesus did. <coughs> he said, uh, he must be, he's in the third heaven with God. He must be in the third heaven with God. So therefore, if the guy was still here on earth, he was lost his mind, uh, that he thought that he was full, filled with a demon, but he was still there in front of Jesus in the crowd, it must be a state of mind. <sighs> like, uh, what was it, Enoch? Enoch? Yeah, it said he, uh, he, he was, but he wasn't. So his fleshy body was there, but his mind was gone. Shit, I guess I'm going to heaven. My mind's going. <laughs> Poor little puppy dogs. <sighs> There's a comment the other day. It said, you must care more about your dogs than you do people. Hell, I can get along with my dogs. I'm the boss. I'm the alpha. We can take care of them like a two little kids, like a two-year-old kid. You got it made. It ain't nobody supposed to be in this front room but me. I can get up and go to the bathroom. They don't even bark or growl or nothing. Chris can go through there just going outside the back or whatever and uh that's what that's what i'm saying they just they don't tell you nobody's supposed to be here in this front room area but me or stir around in the front part of the house he's a little fr frustrated with his little dog i said it takes time to potty train him he said he'll sit there and pee on the carpet 10 foot from his poopy pad i said well you're going to have to train him to get over there on that poopy pad. He's the one who wanted that damn chihuahua. Uh, he kept that little thing on coming and run to me because I've never got on to it. Hey, my damn job's like my grandkids. It wasn't my damn job making mine. Another damn thing. Uh, my wife had straightened them up, this, that, and the other, but hell, I, I figured that was her damn parents' job. I made my kids mine, they can make theirs. <laughs> and my kids would say, Dad, you're just letting them get away with it, everything. Well, I said, if you don't like what you're doing, then get on to them. I said, that ain't my damn job. My job is to love them, hug them, and spoil the shit out of them. And I do a good job at that. I remember when my, my oldest granddaughter, God bless her little heart, uh, I'd take her shopping and I'd push the cart up there and she'd grab some of them dollar to three dollar items and you'd get handfuls of them. Well, when she got older, say, she got out of the damn cart. And her parents would take her to Walmart or Target or wherever. And she'd run and grab everything. I mean, hell, she'd grab $30 dolls and everything else. Just filling up that damn cart with it. And she'd about all three or four years old. And uh, they said, Dad, you've got that kid sport. She just thinks she'd go to a store and, and buys any, and we can buy anything that she throws in the basket. And she'll yell, shop, shop, shop till you drop. Because that's what I used to yell when we'd shop. I said, I'd pull her up there to, like a display deal where this damn thing, everything was a dollar. She'd get ten, twenty dollars worth of shit. And I'd yell, shop, shop till you drop. And she got three, four years old. That's what was her favorite saying. Shop, shop till you drop. Mm. Uh, uh, think 
couldn't take her anywhere. I had her spoiled rotten, but she thought she could buy anything in the store, just throw it in the basket. Well, gonna let you go this morning. You guys have a great day. I'll take you along on my journey. Looking for that perfect place. I guess I'll find out after I'm dead and gone. Take care. Have a great one.